in this exercise we have to control the direction as well so we are going to add direction control in the same environment which we used in exercise 1 now here as we are moving the direction we are changing the direction I have removed this emitter and remover instead I have placed a box on the conveyor all right and in the scene factory I've seen I have added uh, a reset button which I'm going to use to change the direction all right I'm going to assign it at a function to change the direction using this reset switch such that if, it's, if this is pressed once motor will run in one direction if it is pressed again it will run in another direction so it is basically used to toggle the direction of this conveyor and these are the indicators to indicate the direction left or right and this is a stop indicator so these are the different changes I made in this factory I've seen all right so let's see what we need to do in connect IO. Now, this is the last logic of exercise one. We have to modify this logic. Now, how can we start that? Initially, we have to make sure if this is not pressed, if the start is not pressed, motor should not run. All right, this is the main, this is mandatory. If this is pressed, then motor should run in default speed, default direction. And when you press this reset switch, it should change this change direction. All right, this is the requirement. So if you see here, if you focus here, this is we are going to count its input. If this is pressed once, motor will run in forward. If this is pressed again, motor will run in reverse. If this is pressed again, motor will run in forward. So we are counting the actuation of this one. Okay, so this gives us an idea that we have to use a counter in this case. All right, so I'll go to the connect IO and first I will I will make changes to this program later on, but I'll design a program for the counter. So I'll take my reset switch, reset button here. Okay, and I have to make sure if this is pressed once, I will turn on a bit. If this is pressed again, I will turn off that bit. So I'm going to use a bit which will be on when this is pressed once, which will be off when this is pressed again. I'm going to use a bit to change, to toggle the direction, all right? So I'll take a counter here, which will, you can find it here, CTD, okay? So CD is the input, <coughs> so we can take it here. PV is the process value or the present, the value which you want the counter should reach. Okay, so you can take from the source, you can take a numerical, and this numerical I can give the maximum value this is minimum here I can make it 2 and I can give it 2 and this will go to my PV alright then comes your CV this is the count value what is the current value of your counter so if you want to read that you can take an output and connect it here Okay. this is my in output now this is my counter output when the counter reaches 2 this Q will be on all right so now we don't need the Q output instead we are going to have a comparison value because what I say that if this is pressed 1 when the CV is 1 then we need some output when the CV is 2 or when the CV is 0 we need another output well wait a second I think I I should use CTU count up. I'm using CTD by mistake. So it will come here. CTU and this is the current value and that's the process value. Okay. Now when the counter reaches 2, we need to reset the counter as well in that case. So let's see how we can do that. So let's take a situation when the counter reaches 1, I need to turn on a bit. Okay. So let me assign it somewhere here. So next we are going to take as an equalizer. So this is going to monitor the count value. So I can take it here or I can connect it here. So it is going to read the value of the counter. If the counter value is 1, to do that we will take another numerical source and I can assign it value 1 or what I can do is, to be quick, I can make it 1. So if this is equal to 1, I want to, I want to turn on a bit. Okay. So you can take a memory bit from here, this one, this is the auxiliary bit. This is nothing has to do with the tagging of any of the components in factory IO. So I'm take, I can take some address here by default, let's take address 10 and I can write a description, toggle bit. Okay, so when this, this bit will be on, when 
this counter value is equal to 1. When the counter value is not equal to 1, this bit will be off. In that case, we need to reset the counter. Or when the counter value reaches 2, we need to reset the counter. So what I'm going to do is, I'll take another equalizer. I'll take the input from here. When this equalizer is equal to 2, so I will take, I can take this 2 from here. Okay, when this is 2, I need to reset the counter. Okay, so I can also connect it like that, but this will not make sense. I'll take another bit, which will reset the counter. So I'm going to take, uh, from memory, I'll take another bit, and I can name it as reset bit. Or what you can also do is you can take the output of counter you can connect that to input this will also be equivalent so i can take a reset bit because this output will be on when the counter reaches two <coughs> this we can use to reset the counter so okay let's use the counter output only that will be more simpler so counter output will come here and this bit is going to reset this counter bit so you can connect it here but i can copy paste this bit over here and this will be connected here okay so this logic says that we are actuating the counter using a reset button. When the reset button is pressed once, this will be 1. This equalizer block will be true. Toggle bit will be on. If this is pressed again, this will goes to 2. The CV goes to 2. At 2, this is not equivalent. This will be off. And at 2, you will get the output which will reset the counter. So counter will be either 1 or 0. All right. Now this is a toggle bit. Now using this bit, we have to change the direction. Now how we can do that? Now I'm coming back to this old program here. First we have to remove this belt conveyor from here. Okay. And in the factory I.O. we are doing the direction change. So in the conveyor you will take discrete plus minus. This should be selected. When you select discrete plus minus, you will find two outputs in your DAX. One is a positive and one is a negative. Positive will run the conveyor in one direction, negative will run the motor in another direction. Alright, so you have these two outputs here. So let me take it here. Alright, now what you will do with the set and reset, you will take a bit, again an auxiliary bit. So I'm going to copy paste this one here. And we can give the address, I can give it as 12 and I'll name it as main bit. Okay. This is my main bit, which will be on and off based on the input button is pressed, start and stop buttons. And I can also give the indicators using this main bit. So I have removed the output bit with and replaced that with a main bit. Now we need this main bit somewhere over here. Okay, so now what we have to do. Now this is a toggle bit. So when this bit is on, I want this belt conveyor to be on. But this should only be on if the main control is on. So this condition is when this and this should be on, belt conveyor should be on. So in this case, we need to take an AND gate, two input AND gate. All right. So I'll take two input AND gate, connect that to the toggle bit and the main bit. This means when the main bit is on, one end is true. When the toggle bit is on, another end is true. So output will be true. Motor will run in one direction. All right. Now if the toggle bit is off and main bit is on, we need another direction. Okay. So we can take it over here. I can do copy paste. In this case, we need one input is main bit. Another is not operation of this toggle bit. So I'll take a not, not output here. This will come here. And I can take or I can directly write take the bit from here this will also make sense so this is for another direction okay so let's try that in our logic and let's see if it's working so I'll go to the factory IO go to the positive so right now machine is off stop indicator is on so I'll press start so right now this is running in this direction because of the toggle bit if I press it the direction will change now it will move in this direction if I press it again, direction will change. It will move in left direction. Okay. So now if I show you the logic, toggle bit is this one. And if you see the connect tile, my toggle bit is off. So in that case, this is off. So this is true. When the toggle bit is off and main bit is on, one minus is on. Okay. When the toggle bit is on, so I'll press this one once. Now toggle bit is on main bit is on so one plus is on again if a toggle bit is off 
main bit is on, one wire is on. Now, if the main bit is off, this is the main bit. If this is off, no matter if you press the toggle button, output will be off. So when I stop the main bit, now output will start. Now, if even even if I press this one, this will surely change the state of my toggle bit, but motor will not run. This is the main supply. Okay, it's like that. This is for stop. Now we need to add some more indication in the toggle bit, such that if I press this one, there should be a light here. Let's do that. In that case, you will take reset button light over here, and you can take this one, connect that to a toggle bit over here. In this case, you can see you can see the difference. I mean, you can differentiate when this button is latched or when this is not latched, like that. And if this is on, running in this direction, then running in this direction. Okay, this is for stop. You can also use this indicator for the direction. Like if the motor is running in this direction, you can run this indicator. If the direction is changed, you can run this indicator. It's up to you. It's up to the application. And this is for stop. You can also do that. I'll show you that one as well. So this was for changing the direction. All right. Now let's indicate using the indicators. So we have indicators which we were using on the top. We need to remove this main light indicator. We do not need this one. Red indicator is fine. So we'll use this one of the indicator for one positive. Light indicator green one. Then we have another light indicator green three for another direction. So let's try that. I'm going to press positive. Now this is running in this direction. Direction changes. And direction changes. So you can write left or clockwise or right or anti-clockwise on top of the indicator to indicate the direction. This is to stop. And again when I run the motor I have an emergency to stop the motor. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Change the direction forward and reverse. So this is about how we can change the direction of a conveyor using simple connect IO logics. This looks a little complicated but the concept is very simple. I hope you understand. We are just using comparison counters and some memory bits. Using that we have changed the directions. All right, I hope this makes sense. Let's see how to change the speed of the motor using potentiometer in the next video. Thank you.